name is Charlie Porter. Welcome. I'm here to uh, explain a little bit uh, my concept of, of how I help beginners and, uh, and even advanced players learn how to improvise or improvise better. And it's actually a very, very simple concept. Um, if you don't know what improvising is, it's basically what I'm doing right now. I'm not uh, speaking gibberish. I'm speaking with ideas, but I'm doing it uh, in the moment, off the cuff, as they say. So uh, you might hear me uh, actually make a couple of mistakes, but you know that's what it's all about when you're improvising. I'm not reading off of a script. You know I don't have things written down in front of me. It's just uh, real and natural, and uh, it is what it is. So, but when we're improvising, like I said, it's not just making up anything you want. It's based on things that we have learned and have already organized into some, some kind of a, a manner. Uh, for example. I've already learned how to say the words the and all the vocabulary that I'm speaking with right now is vocabulary that I've learned, that I've imitated as, as, as a kid from my parents and that I've later on gone to school, learned how to write down, uh, assimilated the knowledge of, of uh, what those words mean and uh, whether they're verbs, adjectives, nouns, etc. And, uh, and then later on, you learn how to speak with your own voice. You start to kind of change words around, you innovate. You know, uh, instead of saying a word the same way you learned it in high school or heard it from your parents, you might change it a little bit. Instead of saying cool, you might say coolio, right? Um, so that is the whole kind of process that we, we learn as we're speaking. And that same process has to happen when we're playing music. Unfortunately, a lot of kids and adults these days, now when, when they're learning how to play uh, jazz or other types of improvised music, um, they will learn, they'll get a book and they'll learn, okay, what does this book tell me to do? Okay, I gotta practice uh, this scale, this, this blues scale, and oh, and I gotta learn these chords, and all that stuff is great. <laughs> but you gotta remember that that is kind of like when you go to first and second grade and you start learning how to write, you start learning how to read. Uh, you wouldn't do those things immediately right when you come out of the womb, right? Your, your parents aren't gonna hand you a book and say, Okay, learn how to read uh, chapter one and two, uh, which explain, uh, you know, how to say hello and mommy and daddy. That would be absurd. Uh, the way that the baby learns how to say hello, mom, or that's even too too hard, right? The baby at first is going to be saying mama, dada, right? And the way that th they do this, you know, parents will sit there and they'll go dada, dada, mama, right? Point to mommy. Uh, what's happening there is they're encouraging the kid to imitate, right? And that's exactly what we need to do with music when we're first starting, is, is imitate sounds that we hear, right? So whether it's a recording and you're trying to copy it, and I would suggest a very simple recording, something that maybe it's a solo or a song. Songs are better. Maybe it can be songs off the radio. It can be, uh, you know, any style, any genre. It really doesn't matter. In fact, I like to start with nursery rhymes, believe it or not. Take a nursery rhyme that you have in your head. Maybe you've never played it on your instrument before, but you know it really well. So in a way, you're imitating the sound that's already in your head. Okay, so it can be something like twinkle, twinkle, little star. So just like you heard uh, your parents when you were young and like a baby, you heard them go dad, dad, and you, you tried to go dad, dad, and eventually you're able to do dad, dad. And then through the context from him pointing at himself and going dad, dad, you understand that he is dad, dad right? And she is mama. So through context, all this starts to make sense. So what you got to do at first is, is get that imitation going, but with that, that nursery rhyme, the twinkle twinkle little star that's in your head. So for example, if, ne if I've never done this before, which I have, but I'm going to pretend that I've never done this before. So I might stumble a little bit. through that process of playing the wrong note, no, that's not it, playing the right note, right? Just like a baby goes through the process and they're not judging themselves. This is a very important point. Don't judge yourself. Be completely open and just exploring the sound without any uh, criticism. You shouldn't be criticizing yourself. At this point, you're just, you're a baby, right? With music, with improvisation. So imitate those sounds. Get them so they're feeling good and sounding good and you get the melody out. And then maybe try it in a different key. If C is too easy, a lot of people get it in C major very easy. Try it in C sharp, right? 
eventually you want to be able to play it in any key. All right, so it all feels like playing in C major. Everything comes to your ear quickly. That's the first part, believe it or not, of learning how to improvise, right? When we speak, we, we, we're perfect uh, imitators of other people vocally. If somebody says, zippity-doo, you can say, zippity-doo, and it's not hard. You don't have to think, whoa, how did he move his tongue to say zippity No, See, but on the instrument, uh, whether it's trumpet or saxophone or, or whatever, the mechanics start to confuse us at first. So we got to get past that past the boundary of not understanding the, the mechanics, right? So once you get understanding uh, the mechanics and you start to connect the sounds by imitating, the next step is going to be the same thing that you do in school in first or second grade, is, uh, is assimilating the knowledge, right? So now we can start to kind of think about what are the notes that we're playing, right? C, C, G, G, A, A, G. In between the C and the G is an interval of a fifth, right? We know that this is in C major. It utilizes the scale of C major. There are no other uh, chromatic tones outside of C major. No black keys, as, as, as uh, they say in the piano. Um, so once you start to assimilate that knowledge and know that it's in C major, you know what the intervals are, you know what the notes are, that's going to help you to do step number three. Number three, and I mentioned this already, innovation, what we do with, with speech, you know, we learn some words, but then we change them around. Remember, cool became coolio, right? And in fact, uh, kids are always doing this in, in school. Um, there's all kinds of words floating out there nowadays that I have no idea what they mean. But I remember when I used to be hip enough uh, in high school to kind of uh, be with it. But, um, you know, that's how it is, right? It's constantly evolving. Things are constantly changing. People are always uh, on, on, the, on the move to innovate and do their own thing. And that's especially when we're improvising, um, this is a platform for, for doing your own thing. Innovation is, is a big important part of that. But don't be fooled into thinking that you can in innovate if you haven't learned to first imitate and assimilate the knowledge. And by the way, I want to give Clark Terry a shout out because he's the one that gave me these three words um, and inspired me to uh, give my students and uh, you know, th this kind of a format for learning how to improvise. Uh, again, the three words are imitation, assimilation, and innovation, right? This three-step process can be broken down very easily um, playing, you know, learning how to improvise and, and can give you a structure for uh, learning how to improvise. So I've already given you the first one, which is play that melody, right? Imitate it from your mind. Uh, go going on further, you can go outside of your mind and go to, say, uh, a recording, uh, I remember when I was young, when I was 13, Went Marsalis, at the first concert that I ever went to, I went backstage and, and uh, he gave me some advice because I just started playing trumpet. And he said, go home and listen to Louis Armstrong and play what you hear. That's all he said. It was probably the best advice I ever got because the first thing I did was I went home and my grandma, uh, bless her, uh, had uh, all kinds of recordings uh, of Louis Armstrong. Uh, in fact, Louis was one of her favorites. In fact, you can see over there, I got a little picture of Louis in the back. Uh, I love some Louis Armstrong, and um, and I recommend all of you, you know, what no matter what instruments you're playing, considering he's one of the fathers of jazz, just check out uh, what what he's doing. You know, play play those solos one note at a time. Start very easy. In fact, the first solo that I did was uh, it was either Gut Bucket Blues or uh, Backo Town Blues, and those were were easy solos that I felt I could manage. But uh, let's go back for a second. I gotta adjust the screen here. Okay, so we go back to the twinkle, twinkle, little star thing. You've played the melody. You've done it in a couple different keys. Now the first step, okay, that was kind of the pre-step to this, this next three-step thing that I have. Uh, this is a three-step method that I give for my students, and uh, I think it, it, really, uh, it really helps them out. So number one, imitate the melody. Get the melody secure. Now you know what the melody is, right? You can play it on, on your horn or on the piano or whatever instrument you play, singing. Um, so that, now the first step is to change the rhythm. Do a rhythmic variation. You're not going to add any notes. You can repeat notes in the consecutive order that they're already laid out, but do not add any notes. And try to do this in maybe three different types of uh, rhythms. And you can do it every day and do it uh, with three different rhythmic feels. So um, for example, you might do it in a rock and roll feel. You might put it in 3-4, make it a waltz feel. You might uh, do it in a jazz feel, a swing feel, right? Uh, so for example, I'm going to do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I'm going to do it in a tango feel. 
simple but it's taking me through the process in my mind of, of holding on to the melody and thinking of a rhythmic uh, change that I'm going to do to the melody and then doing it simultaneously on the instrument and this can be kind of hard at first you might want to take the instrument away and just try to sing it because we know our voices very well we've gone through this whole process already as babies as we've talked about so if you can sing it first da 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 ba da 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 ba and you want to feel the rhythm in your mind, whatever it is, right? Um, the swing feel. So hear it first, maybe sing it first, try it on the instrument. Okay, so... Uh, or, like I said, you can do it in a waltz. Right, so I'm feeling that as I'm playing it. And I'm altering the rhythm to fit that groove. Okay, so once we've done step number one, changing the rhythm, changing the groove, hearing that groove, but keeping the melody intact exactly the way it is, we're going to do exactly the opposite for step two. We're going to keep the rhythm and the, the melody exactly intact as they are, but we're going to add notes to the melody, okay? So the core is still going to be there. It's still going to be... But now you're going to use notes from the scale. We've assimilated it. We know that it's in C major. Part of that assimilation was also that we, we know that the, the what the note names are, C, C, G, G, A, right? So we also know that there's a fifth there between the C and the G, C, D, E, F, G. In fact, those other notes are perfect candidates for slipping in between those larger intervals like C and G, right? We have... That's one variation we can do right there. So you see what I'm doing right there? I was just taking the C major scale and wrapping it around those notes in different order. And you might want to take, you're going to have to take your time with this at first. You know, maybe you want to just start with uh, a note below the pitch that you're playing or a note above the pitch. We call those upper or lower neighbors. And they can come before the note. They can come after the note. For example, slip a few in like this. <laughs> So I still play the melody, but then I put in a couple of those upper and lower neighbors. Uh, so once you get more confident with that, then you can start slipping in more of the scale, and you can fill it up as much as you can possibly imagine. And you can even start getting into chromatic harmony once you feel comfortable enough. For example, uh, by, by, and what I mean by chromatic harmony, it's not necessarily a harmony based on chromatics, but just slipping in chromatic notes that are not um, native to the C major scale. For example, F sharp. Oh, so, so you see what I'm saying? I put in a couple of those chromatic things, but you're going to have to use your ear and stumble a bit and, and hear what, what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. Of course, you could read a theory book and it's going to tell you how to build a chromatic enclosure, but it's going to be better for you at first if you could just do it by ear and start to hear what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. That's part of the process of innovating. Actually innovating um, is, is doing something that you like, right? Everything that sounds good came about because somebody played it and said, hey, this sounds good, I'm gonna do that again, right? So once you've done this second step, once you've learned how to add the notes, but keeping the melody the same in its rhythmic uh, state, uh, the next thing you're going to do, and this is an exciting step, step number three, get rid of the melody. Keep the melody in your mind, but now you're only going to play the counter melody, and you're going to play, you know, whatever rhythms you want, whatever notes you want, but it's got to be inspired by the melody. So the melody is going to be in your head the whole time. And in fact, this is a way that many jazz musicians play. For example, if you're playing When the Saints Go Marching In, 
uh, and your solo has nothing to do with when the Saints go marching in, then you're not really playing a solo on when the Saints come, come marching in uh, or go marching in. So the point is you want to have the melody of any tune that you're playing in your mind as you're soloing on it. And that way, your solo is uh, an extrapoli... Uh, <laughs> screwing up that word. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, ah, I can't think of the word. And this happens when you play sometimes, too. You, you, you want to think of, uh, of, of, of an idea, and it just doesn't come out. And that's just the way it is, folks. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that that idea is going to be linked uh, to to what you're playing, to the song that you're playing, because it was inspired by that song, right? The, the melody was there in your mind. So let's go back to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Step number three, I'm gonna play just thing, you know, I'm gonna play a, a counter melody and I'm gonna play, um, you know, whatever comes to my mind inspired by Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And in fact, if you were to play along with me right now, it, it should link up perfectly because I have the melody in my mind. In fact, I'll count it off. So if you want to play it along, go ahead. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> something out of the air but in fact it was not made up out of the air at all it was based on that melody which was in my mind and uh, you know another way that you can play things based on the melody is to know the harmony that exists within it you know that's part of the whole assimilation process um, but playing purely from the chords is not necessarily uh, gonna be the best route you want to play in a way that you still have uh, a melodic flow to your playing what I just did right now was kind of more harmonic but let me do that again. Uh, this time, instead of having it be very uh, triad-like, you know, playing the chords, I'm just going to play a, a true counter melody that's not so harmonic. Okay, here we go. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Twinkle Twinkle Little Star with that, it also would fit, but you'd notice that it's a little bit different that time. I was being more melodic in nature, and I think that when you're thinking of the melody, um, you tend to play more melodic. If you're thinking of the harmony, if I'm thinking... <laughs> So that time I was thinking the chords, but it comes out sounding more like a, like an Alberti bass line, something that would Mozart would have been playing in the left hand of the piano, which is basically just outlining the harmony. Hey folks, sorry, I had to go and uh, answer the door, I had a package. Okay, so anyway, just to sum this up and to repeat the steps, uh, step A, right, the pre-step uh, to doing this exercise is, is to imitate uh, a tune. Like I said, start with something easy. If you do a nursery rhyme, although it seems maybe a little bit childish, it's going to be uh, maybe one of the easiest ways to do this to start with. Uh, so like I said, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you could do a Mary Had a Little Lamb, whatever uh, your pleasure. So step A, learn it by ear. It could be a Lady Gaga song off the radio. It could be anything, really. Just make sure it's easy enough. Okay, so then for this three-step process, first thing you're going <coughs> to, excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. First thing you're going to do is play the, uh, the melody with a rhythmic variation. You, you're going to keep the melody notes intact, but you're going to change the rhythm. And like I said, you can do this vocally first. You can sing it and do it, then do it on the horn, uh, your saxophone, piano, whatever your instrument. Okay, next step, step number two is going to be the reverse of that. You're going to keep the rhythm uh, steady. Bom, 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 bom. And you're going to keep the notes intact with the melody, just like you did in step number one. But this time, you're going to add melodic notes to that. So you're going to add notes around the melody. It can be based on the scale and eventually it can start to lead to more, uh, you know, chromatic interweaving of notes as well. By the way, oh, 
inextricably is the word I was trying to think of before. Uh, step number three, when you think of the uh, melody in your mind, but you don't play the melody on, on your instrument, the, the melody is still going to be inextricably linked to what you're playing. So when you play, when you're improvising and you're playing um, things, uh, you know, ideas, when you're playing rhythms and you're, when you're playing melodic notes, they're going to be linked to that melody, like I played in the examples before, even if you're not playing the melody. So that's really uh, quite an easy three-step process that you can do to get you started. Once you start doing this and it, you start to make sense of it uh, through this kind of oral uh, way of approaching it, then you can go to those books and, and say, oh, okay, tritone substitution, what is that? You know, you can start uh, reading that stuff and, and you're going to probably uh, surprise yourself by saying, hey, you know what, I was already actually playing that, but uh, this is what it means exactly. Oh, okay, so I take blah, 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 A through Z, right? It's just like when you go to school, uh, chances are before you went to first and second grade, you already knew how to have a conversation with your parents. You don't go there to learn how to conversation, how to have a conversation. You learn there, uh, you know, about how to write down the words. You, you learn the theory behind the actuality of doing it. And knowing that theory makes it, uh, it gives you the other side. You know, you got the left and the right brain going. Uh, so it backs up that knowledge, it solidifies the knowledge, it uh, assimilates the knowledge, use that word again, uh, and, and makes it easier for you uh, in the future to, to innovate. Because now, uh, besides innovating from, from just a raw kind of uh, feeling or, or emotion, you can innovate from intellect. Uh, intellect. So I can say, well, you know, the G7 chord is there, but um, in fact, I'm I want to experiment with the flat nine or with the, you know the sharp eleven, right? You can go from that angle um, rather than purely just stumbling upon it and running into it and saying, "Oh, I like the way this sounds." What is that? So really, in the end, you want to have both sides. But when you're starting off, when you're first starting off, you really want to work this on, on this the most. And uh, once you start feeling more comfortable with uh, that pre-step of of, of transcribing things, um, of, of hearing something and playing it on the instrument, you want to keep doing that. Definitely want to uh, transcribe whatever instrumentalist inspire you or vocalist, right? So if, if there's a, a song that you really like, that's great. But now you want to start maybe getting to, into more, um, you know, uh, copying, imitating solos, imitating things that are not just songs, imitating, for example, it could be a Louis Armstrong solo if you're, if you're doing jazz, maybe something from the Hot Five or Hot Seven. Those were uh, amazing recordings. Uh, in fact, he was doing some really incredible stuff back then in, in the 20s and 30s. Um, but it could also be, you know, uh, a guitar solo by Steve Vai. You know, it could be, it could be really anything. Um, some, whatever moves you, you know, start playing it by ear, take it note by note, figure out what it is they're doing, and then the, the, the next step is really do your own thing. So eventually, you sound like you, but you is composed of many different things that you've heard. It, you know, when you play uh, uh, a solo on a tune, whether it's, you know, a jazz tune or whether you're playing in a funk band or whether you're playing in an indie rock group, it really doesn't matter. Everything that you've ever played, that you've ever transcribed, it's all going to be in there. It's all going to be part of you. And you might sound completely individual, unlike anybody else. But then upon further inspection, you're going to notice little bits of Louis Armstrong, little bits of, you know, Steve Vai, little bits of... Uh, of Mozart, a little bit of everything. And that's really the beauty of it, is that by learning how to be everyone else, we learn how to be ourselves eventually. So uh, anyway, that's that's it for this three-step process. Uh, good luck with it. If you have some questions, you know, get in touch with me. I, I love to, uh, to help people out when I can. Um, and I do teach private lessons as well, but uh, I'm putting this up uh, really just to help out some of the students that I have already and to help out some other people uh, because People are definitely in need of help when it comes to improvisation. Um, it, it's like I said, if, if you go for those books right away at the very start of it, it's going to be hard. It's going to be very daunting and it's going to be like, you know, what do I do? I mean, just imagine, you know, a baby, uh, they don't have the luxury of being able to go to a book, right? But if, if all the babies came out already knowing how to read, I, you bet your ass they're going to take that book and say, okay. I need to learn how to speak uh, because I do not know how to speak. 
uh, and my mom is going crazy because she wants me to say mama and dad wants me to say dada. All right, where's the chapter on learning how to speak? Okay, luckily for babies, they don't know how to read when they come out and they have to do everything by ear the old fashioned way. We need to st take a step back and be like babies uh, when it comes to learning how to improvise at first and really start to use these, our ears, right? Because music is an oral art form. It's, it's about hearing sounds and about playing those sounds and about organizing those sounds in different ways which inspire people and inspire ourselves. So there it is, folks. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, like always, if, if you did enjoy this video and, and you want to see more, click the subscribe button. And um, I hope to see you later. Good luck.